Commissioners, the uh, first uh, spectrum allocation table uh, published by the Bureau of Standards back in 1920 ended at the upper limit of approximately 30 megahertz. But with the development of new technologies, uh, we've been pushing that uh, frontier uh, ever more uh, higher. Just 20 years ago, we were up at 10,000 megahertz or 10 gigahertz. This was the accepted limit for uh, commercial use of the spectrum at that time. In presenting our two items today, we're pushing those limits still farther. In one of these items, we're allowing the use of frequencies as high as 77 gigahertz. These two items are, in a sense, somewhat historic in that we're now approaching a real frontier, a physical limit. About 300 gigahertz is the end of the radio spectrum. This is the point that the radio spectrum becomes the infrared spectrum. Today, we are initiating steps towards exploring this final radio spectrum frontier. With me at the table today is Dr. Mike Marcus, Assistant Chief for Technology, Dr. Lynn Rimley, Acting Chief of the Policy and Rules Division, John Reed, Senior Engineer in the Technical Rules Branch. Dr. Marcus will present the item. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, before you is the first report in order in docket 94124, which opens the spectrum above 40 gigahertz to commercial use for the first time. This item makes available a total of 6.2 gigahertz of spectrum, approximately 15 times as much spectrum as is used for all television broadcasting. These frequencies are often called the millimeter wave bands due to their short wavelength. The technology in this area has benefited significantly from military R&D, and for this reason, the U.S. is the world leader in such technology. Today's actions and future actions this proceeding will help bring this technology to the marketplace, improve U.S. competitiveness, and give communications users new services to choose among. The notice in this proceeding proposed a variety of bands for commercial use. Today we are addressing three bands in this report and order, the three bands that receive the most interest in the comments. We are collaborating with OPP on another item for your consideration, which will address licensed operation in other bands. All three bands in this item will be unlicensed and will be available under the provisions of Part 15 of our, our rules. Based on several factors, including the nature of propagation in each band and the nature of the proposed uses, we feel that unlicensed use is most appropriate for these specific bands and uses. The items makes 46.7 to 46.9 gigahertz and 76 to 79 gigahertz available for vehicular radar systems such as these two units on the end. These systems show great promise for use in automobiles to warn drivers of possible collision hazards as well as enabling more effective automatic speed controls. Further, the item makes available 59 to 64 gigahertz such as this unit here available for general unlicensed use. The record shows great interest in using this band for wideband local area networks in support of the national information infrastructure. This band has very limited propagation due to absorption of radio energy by oxygen molecules. The rules adopted in this item are some of the most flexible rules we have ever adopted, permitting almost any conceivable use without specific approval by the government. The item also contains a further notice proposed rulemaking dealing with three related topics that follow from the above actions. These deal with out-of-band emissions, spectrum etiquette, and band sharing. We believe that the rules and new proposals on this item will go a long way in opening this new frontier in radio technology and will facilitate U.S. continued, continued U.S. leadership in all aspects of microwave technology. We request editorial privileges. Thank you. Granted. Commissioner Quello. Uh, I guess I should say good item I'm for it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the OET team have crafted rules for spectrum so high that, you know, until recently it wasn't even considered usable. So congratulations on working with the industry, uh, Dick and your staff, for making exciting new technologies in these undeveloped bands available for consumer applications. It's, congratulations. Good. Commissioner Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just reading about Commissioner Chong's proposed roadmap to diminish regulation in the three-stage yeah, pre prong Very good. I'm going to read that. Um, we had had some uh, discussions about interference problems uh, between the radio systems and amateur vehicle or radio systems, amateur radio operators. How do we resolve that issue, or is that an important issue? By including in the further notice part a proposal to suspend the amateur radio use of this band. Uh, pending the development of technical sharing criteria, but but we we are we they will not, it is not a public safety hazard at this point. No, we don't anticipate that any of these systems will be on the market for at least a year. The systems in the 76 only 76 band is shared with amateur. We don't anticipate those will be in the market 
for at least a year and before they're on the market we'll have opportunity to look at the notice and consider suspending amateur use uh, in that band until we get some sharing criteria. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner Ness. Quick question. Um, with regard to the new unlicensed band, I understand we're giving private parties a year to develop spectrum etiquette for technical sharing rules. Can you elaborate on the reasons why these parties prefer that we adopt some basic technical rules rather than just letting them provide whatever they want to do? I think they were inspired by our provisions in unlicensed PCS where we had similar etiquette standards and they, they thought they could get higher efficiency in the band uh, if, they had, if there was a spectrum etiquette. Uh, we thought we'd give them one year to see if they can, re they can reach consensus and see if it's worthwhile and mm -hmm. uh, if they do we will come back to you and recommend such an etiquette but if we don't think it's worthwhile we will uh, probably recommend we just implement it without the etiquette. So essentially, it would appear that equipment providers are agreeing that technical rules will significantly enhance the usefulness of the band for them and for the public. Is that a correct statement? Yes, Commissioner. Okay. Just, just f it's hard to believe, but just four years ago, there was very little interest shown when the Commission initiated a proceeding to address the use of the 28 gigahertz band. And anyone uh, who has been in contentious proceedings here at the commission or at the WARC knows that 28 gigahertz is an extremely popular band at this point. Um, and now we're ad uh, we are allocating bands up to 80 gigahertz. I'm excited about the op these opportunities, the technologies which are on the edge of development. I did have an opportunity to see some of these technologies demonstrated in a tour that I took uh, uh, in the Silicon Valley and it is absolutely fascinating. Um, our actions today will translate into jobs, economic growth, and world leadership in technical development and products. So I commend the staff for a terrific job uh, and an item that is very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Chong. I consider this um, order to be our lanyap to the Board of Editors of Wired Magazine, our bouquet to George Gilder. Uh, what we're saying here is that there is uh, public property of the airwaves uh, way out there uh, in the far reaches, and we're not going to auction it. We're not going to license it. You all just go and use it. And uh, this is a, an experiment, uh, but it is an experiment that is uh, at the absolute maximum of the lack of regulation. Uh, we are saying to Silicon Valley, to inventors, to entrepreneurs, to researchers, uh, there's the spectrum. This is a big block of spectrum. Uh, you all figure out how to avoid interference. You all figure out how to develop your own code of conduct. You all just go and use it and see what you can do with it. Uh, this is a policy that I think is an appropriate uh, corollary to our auction policy where we believe that sharing of frequencies is impractical according to the advice and guidance we get from business, we auction. And where we believe that sharing is likely to stimulate the greatest amount of invention and entrepreneurship, then we say go ahead and do it. And I think this is proof positive that our spectrum policies fundamentally are not about the money that we raise in auctions, but are about a jump-starting competition and innovation. I want to thank you, uh, Mike, and also John Reed and Lynn and Rick Engelman, Doug Melcher. I want to particularly note that uh, it is very important to recognize that the Federal Communications Commission needs an Office of Engineering and Technology, needs the expertise, needs the creativity, needs the vision that your office, Dick, has in order to be able to come to these judgments. It is absolutely an imperative that we have not an um, excessive amount of technological expertise here, but a sufficient amount of technological expertise so that we know how to make this kind of decision in a wise and prudent manner. And I think that this particular decision and others reflects very, very well, Dick, on the way that you have um, beefed up. Uh, and um, liberated the um, intelligence and expertise of your office, and I want to congratulate you. Thank you. If there are no other comments, let's proceed to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 There are no nays. The ayes have it so ordered. The third item on the agenda is an amendment.